reason why we gather. And one of the first things I said is, for that same reason, I think I am too small to stand in that area. Knowing fully well that I'm only but a few years in the journey. But I said we all gathered unto one person, and that person is Jesus, who by his spirit can give us information beyond our understanding. And so it is not high that stands before you, but Jesus, as we examine his plan and purpose for our marriage through his word. Amen. Amen. And want to specially appreciate Pastor and Pastor Mrs. and the entire family and the entire house for allowing us to come and be a blessing and share just the little knowledge we have about this with you. And it's our prayer that the Almighty God will uphold each and every one of us and keep our home standing in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, Pastor, thank you for this great honor. It's a great privilege. Um, I've been working with Pastor now for a while. He's the prayer coordinator for the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Ireland. Okay? So I'm just uh, assisting him. Praise the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't think that the prayer secretary. No. Pastor is in charge of prayer in Ireland. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And uh, mommy has been so supportive and so wonderful. Let's put our hands together for them. And the work that God is doing through them in this part. It takes God. And one thing I must mention is their level of humility. As far as I'm concerned, I know there's nobody that humble themselves that God will not lift up. Amen. And it's my prayer that we all will emulate that as we have an example in the house. So once again, on behalf of my wife and my children, I just want to say thank you. And for those of us who have been coming since Friday, you are welcome again. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I said some few, let's give ourselves some few information about how we do this, okay? It's not I talking to you, but we are talking to each other. Is that okay? That's right. Hence the reason for this sitting arrangement. So. I can pick on you if I notice that you are the shy type, you are not talking, I'll come to you. So you must share with us your own wisdom. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So please, if you don't want me to come and give you the mic, just get involved. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. So we started, we've been looking about marriage, we've been talking about marriage, and we look at uh, marriage being a journey to the unknown before anybody gets started at all. And then the moment you are in it, we said it's a journey into a land of mystery. Because it's only when you are in, you begin to make discoveries. So you don't know prior to you being in it, whether he snores when, or she snores when she sleeps. Except you have a, a privilege that you're not supposed to have, biblically. Is that okay? All right. So once you are in it, it's a journey into the land of discoveries. And there's so many things to discover. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But the whole point of the gathering is that whatever you discover, you have the power to change situations for your own advantage. For the Bible says, all things work together for the good, isn't it? So why, if no matter what you discover in marriage, you have the tool and the ability to change it to suit you? Amen? Amen. Praise God. So quickly this morning, probably this afternoon, I have something here. It's just a small little exercise, if we can start with that. Okay? Small little exercise, and then we'll... I will explain what we need to do on the screen. Thank you. So if we can look at that exercise together, I believe we have a copy in our hand. I'll quickly show us on the screen here. So what you have is a piece, and then you notice it's called marriage ring. Is that right? Yes. And in the middle, there is a core center there that is blank. Don't feel anything there. But there is the next ring you have coupled. So outside of the couple's ring, there are other five names that we want you to put in a specific ring as it relates to you. 
So say after the couple, the next string, somebody else could put who. Who is next to you? Who is next to you? Could that be the system of the world we are in the world? And when we talk about the world system, that includes your work, you know, things you enjoy, you know? And it could be your in-laws, it could be your children, extended family and friends. Can we put each of these in a ring next to the couple and see in order of your priority? Is that okay? Do we understand? So we have in-laws, children, extended family, friends, and so just put them next to each ring. So the first ring is your ring as a couple. So who is next to you? Sometimes it's a blood is thicker than water. There are some friends that are better than blood. Is that true? So just let's do that together very quickly. And that is open to discussion. Do we understand? It's open. We just want to hear views of, you know, how we position things in marriage. And we will see the effect of each in our marriage. And also, can I ask that if there is any question from what we've been doing since Friday, please, you can still put them in a paper and do our very best to answer a few of those questions. So we can also have questions. I think we should be done by now. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. So can we look at the first one there? And so we have the couple. So the next ring, who wants to help us? Who, who, who have somebody there? Children. 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 How many have children? Everybody? Yeah. Does that mean we're all right? It could be right for somebody. Is that correct? But what happens to a family or a couple where there is no children? They have to fill in something. But we don't need to answer that. Is that okay? We don't need to answer that, but something will come in there. So what I'm trying to say is that the fact that you choose to put children next does not make you better than the next person who didn't have a child there. What does that tell you? Your marriage is not equal to my marriage. So if I begin to compare my marriage with your marriage, I'm making a big mistake. Because we are different. So if your marriage is not equal to my marriage, your finance in marriage may not be equal to my finance. Now, my, one, one, one day I, we, we traveled with a friend, and this my friend had two boys, and we're going on holiday together, and then we make a quick stop at um, one of the hitri. And because God blessed me with three, so we are five in number, and he's four. And we had the same thing. Now, it's amazing that when he wants to pay, he was paying 20, and I was paying 30. And I said, Goodness me, can you imagine the cost of an extra child in the family? He was paying 20 and paying. We both fill our cars with fuel while his car was still running in the same fuel I had to top up. I said, goodness me, see the cost of extra weight in the car. I need to take more fuel. So the two is not the same. But we have the same mindset. Everybody loves their family. We want to look after our family. We want to take care of the family. So he's taking care of his family. It's costing him less. I'm taking care of my family. It's costing me more. So he might be getting the benefit now while I'm paying the price now in that he's spending less. But the time comes in future, if I call, I will be calling on three. And so if three decided to be a blessing unto me, you can imagine how much I would get. And if two decided to be a blessing unto him. So things are different from one family to the other. All right, let's quickly go through this. The next ring could be anything. 
But let me give us a, a quick one there. So for those who have children, children comes first, okay? So let's take it on the platform that everybody has children, so children come first. Even for those who don't, they're looking forward for one day and they will make their position. Amen. The next one, in the couple's retreat we had, somebody has put an in-law there and they said, after the children, the in-law comes in. And can somebody else tell me their own, what, what some, I want some in-law, you have in-law? I don't know. Everybody operates different system. Okay, so the system is not the same. Who else has something else there? You have friends. Good. Who else have something? Somebody else have extended family. Next, anybody else? Friends, extended family, in-laws. The next one, extended family, and the next one, friends, in-laws, in-laws. And the last one there, we are all in the world, isn't it? Yes, Lord. You, you have to find a place for that. That's true. How many people put the system, the world, around as the last one? How many? So, also, it doesn't mean that they are the, we, we, we are right. It just means that we see things differently. Okay? We see things differently. Now, as you look at the ring, it's a circle. Is that correct? And if you set it on the ground, what do you expect to happen? When you put a ring, a, circle, a ring on the floor, especially if it's a sloping ground, what do you expect to happen? It will do what? It will roll. So when you look at each of those rings, whichever of the ring has the most power or influence on the entire ring, determine the direction in which that ring will roll. Do we understand? So if pressure, if pressure is applied from the extended family, you will expect the ring to roll in that direction. Is that not? If the weight is more there. If it is from the children's side, if the weight is higher on the children's side, you expect the ring to tilt towards the ring, towards the children's side. And if it's from friends, you will also expect it to do what? To move in the direction that the friends are dragging the union. Now, in all this, realize that there is somebody that is being dragged either to the left, to the right, wherever, of all the four cardinal points, the couple is being dragged around. Now, when we consider an egg, which has a shell, and it has a, the white and the yolk, which of the three is actually protective? Which one is doing the overall protection for the egg? The shell. How many agree with that? Almost. The shell is doing the protection. Because the shell is the first thing you make contact with. And if you crack the shell. But what if it is an egg that is hard boiled? A boiled egg. Um, because we said the shell. So if it's an egg, a fresh one, there's the shell. Because the moment you drop it, the liquid, you know, is exposed. So the shell is protecting. But when it is boiled, what is, cost, what is protecting? What is keeping it intact? The white. But then when you break through the wires, what do you come in contact with? So when it is boiled, the egg is fortified from the inside to the outside. So if you drop the boiled egg, you see the shell crack. But it's not damaged. So you can still pull the shell out and you still have the white there. If you also break the white, you still see the yolk. So when it is boiled from the inside, it is fortified to the outside. So it can be strengthened from outside, at the same time it can be strengthened from the inside. But when it comes to marriage, the strength for a marriage comes from the inside, it's not from the outside. Because there is two people on the inside. Who? The man and the woman. 
So if the man and the woman in the inside is not strong, not determined, not focused, not purposeful, then the ring that surround them determines their life and their home and their future. So when it comes to marriage, the man and the woman needs to be strong because they are the first that come to form the union. Before the children, and yes, I did understand and I accept the fact that they came from a family. That's why the Bible says, for this reason, a man leaves. So before you get married, you already left. So the family is no longer in this situation. You are out of the home first. So the first thing that I establish in marriage, that brings the marriage together, is the man and the woman. And the two have to become one. Except they be one, this external ring can divide them into two. You'll find a home where it is the children that has been the issue that divides the family. Because they don't see themselves as a team, as one. And so the children, you know, they are very good. They are very smart. They come to daddy. Can I get this? Daddy said no. They leave daddy and they go to mommy. Can I have this? Mommy said yes. And daddy turned around and said to the child, why did you have to go and... No, mommy said I can have it. And the first day the man, because of flesh, why did you ask her to take it? And she, why are you yelling at me? It's only just a cake. And the child has just gotten away with whatever the child wants. And the child is there, standing and looking at two of you, shouting and yelling at each other. And the child is just having its own time, eating the cake. I don't know what their problem is. I've got my cake. I've been there, and then we change tactics. You come and ask me, Dad, can I have this? Have you asked your mom? What did she say? It takes time. What did she say? She said, no. So why are you asking me? I stand by her decision. No is no. I know you will support her. <laughs> would you want me to support you? And I'll be out of the house? It's just a matter of being smart. Support you? And I have argument? Lost my peace? No. How do you want to support your friends? Sometimes, you know, marriage came by by friends. Oh, you have friends. It is true friends that you know one another. And so your friends may be the one that introduced you to the next fellow. And then eventually the chemistry work out. And two of you decided you are going to get married. And so you might want to think you hold your friend more than you now hold your spouse. Because you got to find your spouse through your friend. But it's at this point that you have to either make that friend a joint friend, and if it's impossible for that friend to be a joint friend, I'm sorry you've done your part as a friend. Your role is done. You can leave us alone now. It's hard. The Bible says what God has joined together. So you can't throw your family away. Part of the things that make you in life is your family. Your parents, your siblings. You may have issues with them, but a smart partner will always look out to help you to reconcile with your siblings, your parents, and your family. Not drag you away from your family. Because the moment you lost connection, relationship with your family, there is a part of you that is missing. You will be unhappy. And the effect of that on your marriage is the fact that each time there is something to do with your family, you are always not going to be an happy person. And the moment you have a spouse that is unhappy, you don't get to enjoy your spouse that moment. So you yourself, you are losing out. So if you think you are going to encourage your spouse to fight his parent, his father, his mother, and fight everybody, and you are supporting and encouraging, and say, it's me and my spouse alone. Let everybody go and sleep. 
The day your spouse wake up from her sleep, that is the day your pain will start. Because the day she wake up and say, wait a minute, I'm going back to my father. Whatever the dispute is, whatever the issue is, the father could have actually make it, send a text message and say, you know, daughter or son, I'm so sorry. And because forgiveness is built in us by God, she said, oh, I need to go and say my dad. Where would you be if you are the one that have encouraged to disunite your spouse with his or her family? And he said, I'm going. The prodigal son wake up that day and say, I'm going back to my father. There will be a day, no matter what caused this good between your family, that somebody will make one move. And you don't want on that day that that is the day your sadness will begin because you can't stand before those people. So don't destroy your spouse, family, relationship. Rather, God has called us to reconciliation. So help you, whatever the situation, understand what they are going through and also give them your support. Do I hear an amen to that? Amen. And so is everyone. You don't, you don't necessarily have to honor somebody above the other. But marriage is very important. Now, having established that and realized that this ring can roll in whichever direction. But if you don't want that ring to roll, there is something that has to happen. You must find something that will stop the ring from being tossed left, right, and center. And if you look at it there, of course that is not in the paper we have, but you see an arrow that comes in. So with the arrow in it, that ring can roll, is that correct? But it will quickly stop. And the arrow you see there represents Jesus. It represents who? And when Jesus comes in, he doesn't come alone. Jesus does not come alone. So when Jesus came, even before he came to this world, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had been at work on that. So when Jesus showed up, he walked through this earth. He was walking with the Holy Spirit. And so when he was leaving, he said, I'm leaving, but I will not leave you without a hope. I'm going to give you the Spirit that will bring to remembrance whatsoever it things that I've taught you. And so when Jesus comes in, he brings with him the Holy Spirit in the center. So the Holy Spirit and Jesus in the middle holding his name. So when Jesus was here, he said, my father works, so I walk. He said, whatever I do here is what I see my father doing. So when Jesus and the Holy Spirit is in a relationship, what they do is they establish that relationship upon God. So your relationship is then taken by Jesus and the Holy Spirit on the foundation that is God. And when God is the base, tell me where is that ring going? Where is it going? You can't push this thing anywhere. Yet it's still surrounded. So that is why for the couple, the first thing the couple need is to have Jesus at the core and the center of their marriage. When Jesus is in the core and the center of your marriage, listen, it's like somebody who built the story of those who built house. One built his own upon the rock. Another built his own upon the sand. When the storm comes, it's a matter of when, not if. When the storm comes, because it will surely come. But when the storm comes, it beats upon the house that was built upon the sand and they wash away. And the foundation crumbled. But when it is built upon Jesus, it's time, the test of time. And based on this, this morning, I want to quickly look at a Bible verse. If we can project Bible. Jesus is the foundation for marriage. <coughs> and therefore, what is the plan of God? What is the will of God for our marriage?
Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. I'm going to read very quickly. It's a story. Matthew 1, 18 to 21. Now the path of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child. And I want to just leave it there. Verse. Yeah, he said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with a child. Now, I don't want to go to by what means. Is that okay? So I'm stopped at she was found to be with her. So we're talking about a man and a woman here in courtship relationship, engaged. And before they knew each other, I don't know, let's say the engagement, three months, six months, one year, and suddenly the man is still waiting for the marriage. And the next thing is the woman came up with a pregnancy. Sir, how do you ask, how do you attend to that, sir? You haven't got married to her. You are still planning, you are still preparing, and suddenly she showed up with a pregnancy. How do you feel, sir? Do we have a second mic? We will all preach the Bible together. How would you feel, sir? That's the right word. You'll be surprised. It will be surprised. Can I see what another man will feel? He just wants to be surprised. And I like it at surprise. He's a very gentleman. That marriage is not holding you. That marriage is not holding anymore. That's, a, that, that's somebody that's so practical and honest. I'm not doing that marriage anymore. Who else, who else wants to show us how, how they will handle it? Surprise? The marriage is no longer holding. Sir, what will you do? I'll ask question. You will ask question. Now, no, I like your style. I like your style. You will ask questions. So, can you give us an example of the questions? Now, we do the thing, we do the question together. It's one of ask questions. So, uh, without serious question. Yes, sir. Before I wake up and went to get married to a man, yes. we might have caught for yes. a period of time. Yes. And now, and you have not known her because you are not supposed to do that by the scripturally. You have not known her. You have not had any intercourse. No, no, no. I have said it. You are changing his question. That's when you ask question. It's not changing. Why do you think he will be surprised? He knew he didn't have to touch her. He hasn't touched her. He hasn't touched her. Before you get married to a woman, sir, Yes. you have to know the woman that you're going to get married to. Yeah, you know her. You know that every other way apart from touching her. No touching is allowed. I'll ask questions. So give us one question. Now, how did the pregnancy come about? How did the pregnancy come about? Would you, would you have a question? I'm going to start sharpening your knives. Let's put our hands together and appreciate it. Verse 19. Verse 19. And her husband Joseph. Now let's look at Joseph now. So we are dealing with the men now. So this man and Joseph. For this man is this. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and uh, unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. And I want us to look at this, this man here. And that's you, sir. And that's you. That's you, and that's you. We want to look at you. The Bible says, because you are... Don't, don't move the verse. 19, we stay on 19. The Bible says, because you are a just man. You are all just man. And you don't want to shame her. She said, yeah, because she's happy. This man won't put us to shame. Yes. You didn't want to shame her. Yeah. You resolve to divorce her quietly. Yeah. And say, you know what, Mary? I know you 
cheated on me. You've disappointed me. You've caused me grief because of the love I have for you. You've caused me grief because of the love I have for you. Um, please, Mary, can you just go back to your father's house? I have nothing to do with you because I'm not responsible for this, your pregnancy. And let's just look very quickly who Joseph is. From verse 19, where we are. A righteous man, he didn't want to humiliate Mary. His heart is pure. Regardless of what has happened, he has a pure heart. His heart is not full of vengeance or revenge. And these are some of the things that has affected marriage. Vengeance, revenge, unforgiveness. He insulted me, I will insult him back. But Joseph said, you have disappointed me, but I am doing nothing because I love God and I fear God. I allow you to go. I leave this issue to God to judge. And I believe Joseph must be crying. Joseph is a man that is not easily angered. Proverbs 16, 32 says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes the city. So some who has control over themselves, the Bible says they are better, stronger than this man who is than a mighty warrior. That just tiny little bits, they are angry and they flare up. So Joseph is slow to anger. You see, one of the things that can destroy a marriage is the spirit of anger. You see, anger runs people's mouths and makes the tongue to be uncontrollable. Angry people talk out of proportion. They say things they later regret. And they say, words is like an egg, a boiled one. It fell, it's, you can't retract and say, I didn't say that again. Oh, maybe you can get away by telling me you didn't say that again. But you say, that's the reason, the first thing the police will tell you is that I'll read you your right. You have the right to remain silent. Because anything you say will be used against you in the court of law. And so when you decided to run your mouth against your spouse and you say, you should just forget it. Oh, no, it can't be forgotten. It's done. It's said. It's said. And you expect him or her to say, I was only joking. It's not true. That's why the Bible says, let your ye be ye, and let your no be no. Anything that is more than that is evil. Anger exposes the heart. James 1, 26. James 1, they say, if anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this one's religion is useless. That's what the Bible says. The only thing about Joseph in verse, the next verse, Matthew, as we were reading, Matthew 1, 18, verse 20, 21 now. The only thing about Joseph is that Joseph knows God's voice. And so for you to and I to succeed in marriage, we must understand God's voice and the God's plan and purpose for marriage. God is the one that established marriage. The Bible talks about when God created heavens and the earth and he created man. He said everything was good. 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 Until the man was created, he was good. But when God takes a second look at the man, I think that was the first time the Bible recorded, and it was not good that the man be a lord. Loneliness is not a good thing. And so God created for him a help me, not a house me. Help me, not house me. Help me. Somebody who will support the man. So the vision runner, the man, 
But because he is a flesh, he will be weak and tired. He needs a support. That is why women are frustrated in a home when the man has no vision or plan of future. Because you need to be thinking ahead. You need to be making plans. You need to call your wife and say, these are the things I have put in place for tomorrow. And so you are not coming up with ideas. You are not coming up with anything. You are not taking the leadership role. The children are just there. Everything is left with the woman. What am I deciding to have so many women? Because the men are not taking up that stand and the responsibility and their position in God to understand and identify where God wanted to go. You see, God is a God of order. And when it comes to marriage, he puts things in order. He does not want anybody to rule over the order. But he just wants somebody to take the leadership role, to guide and to just say, and the focus he chooses is looking at maybe the men's physicality and the things he put in men, they will be able to go to war. You know in those days, men go to war, women don't go to war. They will be able to go to war, they will be able to find a way to defend their family so that the plan of war for reputation can be defended. So, John chapter 10, verse 26 to 27. It says, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Jesus talking. So why, why Joseph? My sister will be saying in Matthew chapter 1. So why Joseph? There was verse um, 20 there. Why Joseph was considering what the Bible said to God in the previous verse. He said, and he decided that he was going to put her away quietly. But the Bible says, as he considered this, he is yet to do it. So it's not in a rush. Joseph took his time. He was thinking, he was meditating. He was praying, how could she do this to me? If she truly loved me. And you see, for many, she has nothing to say. Because many herself is confused and perplexed. Where has this come from? How do I explain this to you? So many are times, the first thing you attack, you fight, but they are of the beginning as confused as you are. So before you come with any idea, hey, quiet, I know. I'm already working on it. Thank you. It's not working on anything. <laughs> but because of the nature of man, ego, pride, evil, I'm already working on it. And then two weeks later, you haven't seen any results. And he's still working on it. And you know if truly he has work on it, you should have something by now. And so you go back. I know you won't do anything. You are always this lead him and transfer the body to God. That's your body. Yeah. Unto Jesus. For he cares. Yeah. 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 anger. He knows the voice of God. He hears God when God speaks. So when you hear God and you bring God's voice into the home, Nobody argues. So some of the things you're struggling, you won't say, she won't. no, no, no. You go to God and hear God and bring God's divine instructions. They will follow. And that is when you gain a woman to submit. Ephesians chapter 5. Wife, submit to your husband. Yes, unto the Lord. So when you think the wife needs to submit, it's not to you. It's through you to God. The wife is not to submit to you and you be the king over their head. No, he's submitting through you to God. Because you bring message from God, she will submit to it. So when you come and say, my sister, God has told me, you permit me to share? <laughs> So we were in a place, a particular year, and a program. They were recently building for me. And I stand in the auditorium. And the man of God was saying, God is calling people that wants to give 2,000 euro. Behold, I did not have 5 euro in my account. And I stand there. No, he didn't ask for 2,000. I just was just asking people to come and donate for the patients. And I hear God telling me, drop 2,000. I look at well. 
I didn't have 2,000 flags. I had 5 euro with me. But I had it clearly. Then I said, okay, if you are the one who has spoken to me, go and tell her. Mm. So I went out. I stand in front. They prayed for me among the people that came out, and I went home. And because we operate a joint account, it is impossible to hide the money out of the account. It's all in there. You will see. So we got to my said, my wife, did you notice I went out? He said, me, I came out too. I said, what did you hear God say? She said, I had God said, we should give 2,000. Hmm. So work. I was proud in myself. I was happy. I jumped up. And so we walk away. We said, then my next thing is, we have to find the money. Even if it's borrowing, let's go and borrow it. Because the kingdom business requires haste. That's my belief. But it takes two to tango. At that moment, she doesn't believe it requires haste. Ah! Then I went back and said, God, this woman will cause me a problem. I've had your voice. She had your voice. But now she said it is not time. Why will it not be time now? Let's go and borrow this money from credit union and pay it and see what you will do. But our faith is not at that level. Our faith is provide us the money and we will do it. <laughs> so I have no choice. We have to wait. How long did we wait? Three years we were waiting to pay the money. That is marriage for you. <laughs> Three years until the second person says it is time. Then it is time. If it's going to be time today, then God should move into action and do something different. I'm not going to scatter my marriage because the God is the God of that marriage. It's also the God of that kingdom business. I have had God's voice and I'm in God's giving relationship. One must not destroy the other. Do we understand? And church is not in the business of breaking people's home. So I waited. And so the day came when we agreed to pay. And then she had forgotten it was two. Am I correct? How much did she tell me it was? A thousand. No, she's now told me it's a thousand. I said, ah, I didn't forget. Because at that time, our strength was just one thousand. So if we are going to pay two thousand, we are going to crash other things. So she couldn't remember, but she was willing. She had a good heart. She wants to do it. But then our finance does not support it. She said, this one is not a thousand. I am very clear. I have waited all these years. I am not waiting all these years to come and do her for beatings. We will do it in full. So she didn't quite understand. She said, you cannot lie. But I'm not just sure. So we pray back to God for bigger blessing. A blessing that we say, you know what, we have more. Let's just give more. Let's have to wait. So we came to that point and then we gave it. Amen. Now I'll tell you what happened. Because as soon as we gave it, we knelt, we gave it and then we knelt down and we prayed. And we put our hands against the building, the structure of that that was being acquired. And we said, Father, because as at that time, I didn't have a house to buy. I said, Father, as we give this, now it is time for us to provide us a house. I'm not talking about here, I'm talking about um, the place I came from. Just give me something. And um, I think about a, less than a year later, I received a phone call. Somebody has a house for sale. And I bought a house that was nearly finished at 1.7. Three bedroom flat built to a LinkedIn level on a full plot land and they offer it to me at 1.7 million naira not euro not euro naira i don't i don't know how we can calculate if somebody can quickly help me how much is that in euro 4000 4, approximately 4200 euros mm. so we took it and we still have to finish it you understand what i mean but at least we will save something so that's how God works when we obey him, when we follow his blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> to finish this, Joseph had God. And let's quickly look at a few things that happen. When somebody is having pain in a particular area of their body, and that pain is something that is so common that when pain like this happens, there's been a general sickness that people associate this pain to. 
The first thing that happens to such an individual is fear and panic. Am I also having this kind of problem? And how would you feel when you appear before the doctor and he say, your case was not so? Just take a pain reliever and the pain disappears. What happens? You feel relieved. The burden is taken away. This was the case of Joseph when he hear God telling him that your wife did not cheat on you. I'm pregnancy, I was responsible for it. So take Mary, your wife, and carry on. And did you see that Joseph did not object? He took Mary, and they moved on. Now, what would have happened if, let's assume, Joseph was to act as a natural man, and all he has to do is to pay, break away from this woman? One thing, pain, lost year in courtship, grief, bitterness, revenge. Even if he let go, and when to go and find another woman to marry, it's not going to be the same as the first love. And so, it is possible that <coughs> Joseph might end up destroying his life. Dis you know, depressed. And so God was able to help Joseph because when God, Joseph hear from God, his heart was healed. And so I don't know what you are going through in marriage today, today, today. It's if you only can hear God speak to you, He will heal all your pains. Because this was what caused a turnaround in Joseph's life. And he accepted a woman whose pregnancy he was not responsible for. And he looked after the pregnancy so much that when it even comes to a time for the enemy to kill the child that was not his own, Joseph protected the child by hearing again because God asked, told him, take the child and the mother and move away from because Herod was looking to kill him. This is the role that God is looking for somebody to take, be it the man or the woman, somebody just taking the leading role in the home before God. Who can stand before God and take care of the home for God? Because Joseph is a righteous man, he knows where to take his matter to. He took it to the presence of God. I advise us that we don't take our married matters to the world. And that the standard of the world is not what God expected for us. It is also good to seek help to seek counsel. And you might think that you are alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. There are a lot of people going through the same thing. All you need is to hear other people's story. The word of God is Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Numbers 14, 28 says to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so will I do. So when you speak to God about your marriage, He will do according to what you have said. Don't lose hope, don't give up. So what is the will of God for your marriage? The will of God is that our heart will be returned unto Him concerning our homes and our marriage. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 8, Matthew chapter 19 verse 8, Moses, the people came to Jesus and they said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permit you to divorce your wife. But from the beginning, it was not so. <coughs> so one of the problems we found in marriage is the fact that our heart is so hard and so difficult. And as a result of this, God just allow our own will, permissive will. But if you want his will, you can only find him swimming in. There's no way a marriage can be successful outside of God. Please establish that and hold it. If God is not in it, it's going to hit the rock. John 10, 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. To save our home and our soul from destruction, that is the will of God. Because the enemy is number one en is the number one enemy. The devil is the number one enemy of marriage. Because his intention is to break home. The intention of the devil is to break home. So to save our home, we must be able to go before God. And before we finish today, we will take our matters to God. Listen, you do need to tell the whole story. God knows it all. He's seen what you're pastoring in those years. He was the one who saw Joseph. And he came to talk to him. He's willing to talk to you. 
if you are willing to listen to me. But before we pray, please, we said, I said at the start, from what we've learned Friday, Saturday, if there is any question, please, we would like to take them. I, hope, I believe that there might be a few questions that's been around. So if there's questions, we would like to take those questions. And while we were looking at uh, our marriage yesterday, we did specifically talk about finance in marriage because it's very important. We started on Friday. You see, the issue of marriage is not something that can be so sorted or discussed in a day. It's so big. You can continue for the next three months. We won't cover the ground. The marriage that will last you 45, 50, 80 years, you think you can discuss it in a day, in two days, in three days, it is impossible. But the little opportunity that we have, whatever God allows us to deliver, we will deliver within the short time that we have. But today, what I want you to know is that the will of God for your marriage is that you be his own child and he will look after you. God will take care of those things. Amen. It is not for you to struggle. Marriage is not to be endured. It is to be enjoyed. And so whatever it is that will not allow you to enjoy marriage in the mighty name of Jesus, the almighty God will remove and he will operate them. And I just quickly, while I'm waiting for some questions, I'm just doing, going back and doing a flashback on some of the things we've shared between Friday and Saturday. So if the question is there, can we have them? Uh, so we also come to a point where we discover that Issues in marriage may not just be because of one person or the other person. It could be a trace in it. So it could be a generational problem. It could be a cause. It could be something that actually needs us to fight and break a cycle. As we found out in the life of Abraham, who family struggle had to make him travel to another country where he has to deny his wife. Genesis chapter 12. And in Genesis chapter 26, the same thing happened to Isaac. Isaac also had to go because of famine. And when he gets there, he denied his wife. And do you know that we are not exempted? Economic crashes have made people move from one location to the other. And they couldn't carry their family along. And there had been temporary separation. And because things aren't working, some temporary separation has become permanent separation. But God is the restorer. He will restore all things in the mighty name of Jesus. If we have any questions, can we just have them? We don't need to wait for it all. All right, thank you. Now, again, I just want to appeal to us, when a question comes, I throw it into the audience. I want us to all be part of it and feel it. Now, the question is, how do you get your spouse who does not believe in the God of the Bible? I only came to Christ in just a few, in the last year. Now God is causing more problem for my spouse. Where I have happiness, she has hatred. Now, I understand that this means that the God that I have just found is causing my spouse pain because I'm now a new person. I am now doing things differently. And um, my spouse is not happy. Who wants to contribute? So while I'm, my happiness now has become the sadness of my spouse. So, invariably, it seems coming to God is doing more harm than good. So, who wants to help? Who wants to? Who wants to? Praise the Lord. As coming into Christianity for a day, in life and finding it all new and the excitement and the peace and the joy and I remember Anthony my husband would have got God before me and I resented him I was jealous I was angry because I was thinking I was going to be left with no uh, in this world the way I was 
but that he showed me kindness, he showed me understanding, he showed me what he was getting in the Bible and what God was doing in his life, what is the peace that he had. I had torment, I had loneliness, and then he was getting this peace and I couldn't understand it because I couldn't really read the Bible. So I found it all confusing how Anthony could go from, you know, silence in our home to now, you know, thinking that he'd never pick up the Bible and read it. So I watched him and I observed him and I realised that, you know, the God that he found was real. And if I really could, you know, find him the way he found him, I know that I would have that peace as well. So I'd say to that person that re re asked that question, you know, shine in your home. Yeah. Show the love of Jesus, even when hatred comes towards you, shine and show what Jesus is doing in your life. Show the works, because, you know, people say, I have Jesus, but you don't see no evidence of it. But you see it when you, you control love, when fire is coming at you, and when hatred is coming at you. Sing in your home, you know, make a cup of tea. It's the small things that they will look, that they will see different in your life, you know what I mean? They'll see that difference, and they'll see that it's a good difference, and they will want that difference. Praise the Lord. Do we see? That's the right answer. Because when you have an unbelief, God hasn't done any wrong, He's only come to beautify your life. But it will take time. For the other spouse to see things. And that's why Paul said, if any has an unbelieving spouse, let him not depart. He said, through you, God might save your spouse. So all you need to do is to continue to show the light. Respond to hatred with love. Respond positively. Over time, over time, the, the story will change. So don't be frustrated. As the writer said, I've only just come to know God. This has, you know, we say, come to Jesus, it's free, salvation is free, but it costs God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you too will pay some little sacrifices and prices. So you might want to pray more for your spouse. Pray more for your spouse and pray that the love of God comes into their heart. Amen. All right? Okay, the next question, the next question, and I want us to touch something. I have asked them to put a tiny little uh, home financial management on the screen. How do you get... There is very little to no display of affection in the church couples. Is this because of culture or is it a redeemed church of God issue? So I'm thinking this question simply is trying to say that we can't see affection among couples when we see them in church. Would that be right? Am I, am I okay to interpret it like that? That there is no affection being displayed when you come to church, when you see couples. All right. Who wants to help us? Who wants to? Anybody who, who just want to contribute that? What, what kind of affection are we looking forward to when we come to church, when you see couples? Do you want to see them sit beside each other? You want to see them holding hands? You want to see them kissing, hugging, embracing? Is that what we're looking to see there? To see? <laughs> Who wants to help? Who wants to help? Please. We want a show of affection when we come to church. It's not. Do I see a hand at the back? Somebody responding? Okay. It's not. Because, listen. Hello? Hi. If as a couple, you're working in the same place. How do you show affection with your work? Work is different. <laughs> that is a business. So when you have business with God, now there is purpose for, yes. Somebody wants to say something. Yes, please. Quickly. Thank you. Um, my thing is that as Christians, we're told that the Christ we have inside, we should display on the outside. Yes. So if I have love for somebody, why is it that nobody can tell that that's even my husband? They can't even tell that I'm even in any way related to that person. I'm not talking about, you know, that it's not somebody's face off in church. I'm just saying like even holding their hand or anything, nothing at all. Nobody like, 
I'm sorry to say, but there are times I'm surprised when somebody tells me, oh, that's such and such husband. I'm like, really? I didn't know. So to me, that's the way it seems to the younger generation, first of all, is not good. It doesn't show that marriage is enjoyable, as you said. So Thank you. That's clarity to that question. It's okay. Now, let's... I, I strongly believe that in this house, in this house, everybody will know that Mommy P is. Sorry, sorry. Praise the Lord. I just want to please plead with us. This is the only time, even though in future uh, we may continue to teach the church on marriage, but for the time that the guest minister has come. Please bear with us for today. All the notes, my mind have been, a lot of things have been going on in my mind. When he was still talking, if you see me coming up, because I know there will be questions, so that there will be quality time for that. So please bear with us. If we overshoot our time, please. Is that taking? Please, I, let, I want us to agree. Is that taking? Yes. Eh? Yes. Please, because we want your questions to be answered. Thank you very much. Okay. I said everybody in the house will probably know that Pastor Mrs. and Pastor here, they are husband and wife. Is that true? It, no, no, I'm asking that question. Everybody knows. Okay. So, we, no, no, no. Hold on. We are going somewhere. We are, no, we are going somewhere. I'm, go, I'm going to find a brother. Brother, are you married? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, are you married? Your wife comes here. All right. Hold on for me. Are you from here? Yes. Do you know his wife? Yes. How? I know them. How do you know? Personally. I don't want, I don't want somebody like that. Personally. Personally. No, we don't want to know that. Because we must answer that question correctly. It's not... You have a contribution that will help us out. They are not romantic. In, what is not your culture? All right, sister. Let's, let's, okay, thank you. Let's, let's do justice to this. I understand the question perfectly right. The question simply is asking us, why aren't we romantic? Yes, ma'am. Um, please. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. Somebody does not know how to. They have to be taught how to be romantic. How to be romantic. Because sometimes in a marriage, if let's say on Valentine's Day, my husband didn't call, I called him. And I said, Look, today is Val's Day. I know you're busy, but it's just the call, just to say, You know that kind of a thing. We all want to be say, You know, like you want somebody to say, You're loved. You know that kind of a way. So, I think sometimes it, it, saying is not culture. It's something you have to learn in a marriage that if something you see and you know this is nice, you can tell your husband. Because sometimes we do hide our feelings and it's not a good thing. If somebody doesn't know how to express themselves, how do you want them to do it when you're not doing it? It's not something you have to take and say, oh, it has to be like this. My husband is not that kind of person that expresses his feelings. I'm the kind of person that I love to express myself. So if he's not doing it, I do it. I Good. give him a nudge sometimes. And I say, you let everybody know yes. he's your man. Yes, I do. Because somebody might be thinking he's, uh, he's just, yeah. let them know he's your man. Okay? But <laughs> because they are holy. It's not about holy. All right. For me, I express it that African men, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right. All right. Can, can, we, can, I, can I quickly say something? Can I quickly say something? This is, this is very interesting. Hello? But there is something I want us to understand. In as much as we, we want to go on and on and on, time is also important that we, time is also important, so I would rather just want us to answer questions, and you see, we can't deliver everything, but an idea and information is passed, we all go home, we dwell on it, we improve, we become a better person, okay? So we can't take every contribution, is that okay? So we just take one or two when it comes to issue. So they did tell me that they didn't hear what she said. She said, because African men, they are too local. That's what she said. Local. That they are not, they are not exposed. They are not exposed. Okay. Yes. I'm not romantic. I can tell you, I'm very romantic. I'm in a very romantic place. So, now, my, my, you will, you will quickly let us answer but it's not about being local or it's not local. It's, it differs. She just tells us the same, okay? It's everywhere, all right? And we've seen different kind of people going for cancelling and all sorts. Well, I think we should bring this to the pastor. Even our pastor is not romantic. He's too holy. Very holy. Now, sometimes excuse me. Okay, that only. So let that to the world. Okay, pastor. All right, I take that. Okay, I will. I will move to the next person. So I'm moving to the next person. I'm moving to the next person. Now I'll quickly say something. To, to my wonderful sister there. Now, you cannot determine whether pastor is romantic or not. The wife, the wife, the wife, the wife determines. The wife, no, 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 don't worry. The wife determines whether he's romantic or not. Okay? And you never can tell whether he's the wife that doesn't even want him to show the love in the public. So, please. All right. Quick, next question. Yeah, please. I do remember listening to a Pastor Rick Higgins one time, and very godly man, he's married for the last 30, 40 years, and his wife put the same question to him. She said, no, you never tell me you love me. And I like to adopt the man's response as the pattern from my own marriage. He said to her, he said, I told you when I married you, if the situation changes, I'll let you know. You know? <laughs> spoken enough about being romantic let the love show Matthew 5 says we are the light of the world if there is love it will show we don't need to be looking for it if you are not romantic please become romantic if we, it will become boring it's a pity that some of us are not here yesterday we talk about romance in marriage we explain about date going on a date date must not be too expensive we talk about good quality sex between husband and wife you are not here we can't go back so if many are here they will by now know how it is to be romantic because when he left the house in the morning he will pick up his phone and send you a text message and say honey darling how are you doing i just want to check on you that is in the morning at 12 noon he's sending another text message at three any little break he had is sizing you up is citing you so by the time he arrived at home we are opening the door. You are welcoming him. You say, welcome my husband. Welcome my wife. And then before you know, guys, we come another day for that. Amen. All right. I don't want to. Taking care of our mental health as a wife in order to be able to care for the family. Now, you see, you know today in the society that mental health it's one big thing that is being talked about. And I'm happy because it's easy women, sometimes they quickly come out. But men seem to shy away from mental health issues. They don't talk about it. Now, what are the things that are responsible for mental health? Now, problem in marriage could be responsible. 
And when people don't talk, and I think a lot of companies today has been encouraged to establish a forum where people can have an honest and an open conversation without being judged. Now, for us not to be in the situation where we are experiencing mental issue, the first thing is open your mouth and talk. talk. You are not happy today, find somebody that you can confide in and tell them, I am not happy. The moment you tell somebody I'm not happy, the next thing is you can see that problem being relieved. Not automatically so, but there is a relief that comes. Whether from whether one thing or the other that the person said to you. Just take the initiative to talk. And this is one of the things we talked about things that destroy marriage. Communication barriers. Every marriage where there is an unresolved issue, it will lead to a bigger problem. And every unresolved issue makes husband and wife to grow apart. You do not decide to work apart. It just means that you did not decide to work together. It's a simple thing. My goodness, it's nothing to be afraid of. He or she is your spouse. I am not happy with you. Period. And walk away. And then give him the job. Transfer some of the ethic to the spouse. Let them carry it. And then he comes back and says, I don't like what you told me. I'm not happy. That is the beginning of the conversation. And then you realize that the burden that you are keeping inside of you, what to neck is you, you begin with it. Because the moment you speak about it, you are relaxed. All the tension leaves. So, communication will help us to overcome that. Now, this one says, in dating or courtship before marriage, what are the do's and don'ts? This we dealt with on Friday. The do's and don'ts. And we even compare dating and courtship because the two are different. And we also went in to talk about speed dating. Speed dating and everything, we looked at all these things on Friday. Um, our time today does not give us the opportunity to look because it's, it's in, on its own, it's big. We will talk about you first being mature and that different level of maturity. And we also talk about you knowing the person you want to engage yourself with because Amos 33 said, except two are in agreement, how can they work together? So there is a lot, there is a lot in the do's and don'ts of dating. So when you say do's and don'ts, we actually would rather look at what it is before you say I do. We will look at the qualities of a marriageable man and the qualities of a marriageable woman. And we also will look at characteristic of a marriageable woman and a marriageable man. Because when you are cutting, it is not a time to endure. It is time to identify, to see whether the two of you are compatible or not. Whether this person will nurture or care for you. You are still dating and then he's already cheating on you. And you say maybe when I marry him, it's going to change. It's not going to change. You think marriage will change anybody? No. You're trying to date him Cutting is already giving you a back and slap, and you say it's okay, it's because he loved me. Assault, six months you'll be in your grave. If he gets away with back and slap, he thinks he can get away with murder. And don't let me say he thinks, some also she thinks, because she could be the one slapping you. You are at the dinner table, you are eating, and you are still dating, and you see a good image pass by, you just have a look, and then you already get a slap. Why are you looking? I mean, in front of you, you are still looking. I have not signed the contract, I still have my freedom to look. <laughs> Do we understand? But there's more to that than what we can deal with now. But please, again, seek help. Seek what? Help. And I'm going to, I say that because I see this next question, which says, we were, you said we should not seek marriage counseling outside of God and the church, but how about marriage counseling? 
Not that you should not seek marriage counseling outside of church. Number one is you cannot do it outside of God established. But outside of church, yes, you can. But the only thing is you must ensure that the person you are seeking help for also has the understanding of God. And so they can guide you within the principles of God. Do we understand? So the factor we cannot remove is the God factor. Except you are not his own child. So it can be outside of church, but just make sure that whoever is counseling you is of God. Is that okay? We go to non-Christian doctors for sickness. Why not for 